Hello and welcome. Today I would like to rant about the last ranked season a little bit. Uh, sufficient time should have passed that um, my annoyance with some teammates shouldn't color my opinion of the ranked season that much, but there are quite a few issues I would like to still talk about. In the background I will be showing me my last ranked battle of the season, where I'm in the Wiscovitsa. I'm not really going to commentate all that much about the match itself, but I would like to point out how um, passive people are and... Uh, how much people try to survive, which is a very good thing because it leads to more interesting gameplay. Uh, because in ranked season you don't, or in ranked you don't want to give the enemy team an advantage because when a team gets an advantage they try to hold on to it. Usually what happens on a 3 cap map like this is one team gets C, other team gets A, and then most of the fight get, goes over B. One side takes it and then the other side has to attack into it. And that leads to some interesting potential strategies and gameplay. So anyways, um, the topics I would like to cover are not losing a star if you're first in uh, the team. Uh, second is tier 7 in ranked, then the camping playstyle and the role of destroyers in ranked, then the question of where are the carriers and a few words about the maps as well. So it seems like a very good thing that the first in experience doesn't lose a star in ranked. Because it means that a good player isn't uh, pulled down as much by, uh, well, a bad team. It seems very good on paper at first, but if you think about it more, it's not actually good at all. Because, uh, well, if you th not everything you do is uh, appropriately rewarded with experience. For instance, if a destroyer smokes some battleships, they get zero experience for it. Even though such an action can literally decide the game. And uh, for me, and what I imagine many people think, is that ranked should be about trying to win as hard as possible. And um, if you have behavior which isn't rewarded appropriately for experience, well, you have incentives to do things which don't lead exactly to a win and uh, aren't really helpful. For instance, destroyers get a lot of experience for capping, so people suicide cap which is they're trying to cap um, under circumstances which aren't optimal for trying to win the game, but they're trying to maximize the amount of experience they have. And uh, this whole thing essentially leads to the fact that uh, you're not doing everything to try to win the match, which in the past, or in the past ranked seasons, you would, because the only thing that would give you anything is actually winning the match. And I feel that that's a very, very bad thing. Because it, you know, it just leads to things like uh, lots of camping and um, suicide capping. And it also means that people try to stay alive even in situations where, you know, you normally would try to do your best to deal as much damage, but you're going to die. Uh, for instance, when a game goes on and uh, one team, like your team, is losing, what people often do then is try to stay alive as long as possible to try to maximize the amount of damage they can do to the enemies to, you know, gain a lot of experience. Instead of trying to do things that would still give you a slight chance of winning the game. Because, you know, if they get a lot of experience, they're gonna be number one and they, they're not gonna lose a star. They are much more likely to be successful at that than... Uh, banking on a small chance of winning the game, but this also means that, you know, the team is being let down by that guy. And that's that just doesn't feel right, and in my opinion it kind of uh, ruins ranked a little bit. So the next topic is uh, tier 7 ships. The problem I find is that tier 7 ships usually aren't very good. It's something similar to tier 9. But um, my main issue isn't with... Uh, destroyers, and obviously not carriers, because carriers are essentially absent in ranked. My main issue is with cruisers and battleships. First of all, the problem with cruisers is that uh, cruisers often rely on a lot of uh, concealment to actually survive. But tier 8 is where you get the concealment module. And for instance, uh, Myoko has 11.7 kilometers concealment if you outfit her with everything that gives concealment. Whereas an Otago has 9.1 kilometers. It's such a huge difference and I feel this is one of the reasons why you saw so few cruises in rank this season. Not to mention that the Pensacola is so much worse than the New Orleans uh, comparatively for the tier. And it, it just feels that um, 
tier 7 is very bad for cruises. And that's why I really like tier 8 more. The other reason, like I mentioned, is battleships. And I feel that the battleship issue is even bigger than the cruiser issue. Because uh, when you go from tier 6 to tier 7, uh, battleships gain additional uh, gun caliber, but they don't really gain enough uh, armor to mitigate it. If you have tier 6 battleships and one points a nose towards the other, the other one battleship can't penetrate the other from the front, which means that angling is highly useful. But the tier 7 this doesn't work anymore, because uh, you have only 25mm of frontal armor, while you have 406mm guns. This means that overmatch means that uh, that 25mm of armor gets overmatched, which over and overmatch is the fact that uh, if your gun caliber is much larger than the armor, then your shells will penetrate regardless of the angle of the ship, which means that it's very easy to penetrate each other from the front. And uh, if you think about tier 8, that's different, because a tier 8 uh, ships have 32mm of frontal armor. The only ship that can uh, overmatch them from the front is the Yamato. But at tier 7, you have 25mm of frontal armor, and every tier 7 ship and higher can overmatch them except for the new Scharnhorst. So it, it's a pretty big deal, because this means that uh, angling doesn't really work all that well. And as a result, it means that uh, pointing your nose at the enemy only has pretty much uh, one main advantage, which is uh, that uh, if you're broadside on, you just show much more ship to the enemy than if you're nose on. But that's about it. If the enemy gets shells on your ship, they penetrate from the front. And that's a pretty big deal, and that's why I don't like tier 7. By the way, like I mentioned earlier, it's campy. Like, look at what we're doing at B. We are holding the position, because we know that we have an advantage. And the enemy team has to attack into us. We are essentially setting up a crossfire, so that if the enemy team does attack into B, we have a very good chance of taking them out and because, you know, we have two of the capstones while they only have one, they have to attack us at some point or they will simply lose in time. And by the way, if you look at the Mitski over there, uh, who is outside there, what he's doing mostly is swatting for us. It's not very useful in terms of experience, but it's incredibly useful for winning the match. Because, you know, we can see what the enemy team is doing. If the enemy team gears up for a push, we will know that, and we will be able to react for, to it. Not to mention, he also keeps me safe in, where in the position I am in. If he wasn't there, I couldn't um, stay where I am, and they would have a much easier time at pushing B. Anyways, enough about that. Um, it's just interesting gameplay, because, you know, holding a spot, like being an attackative tactically useful situation is actually useful. Unlike random battles where people will just take the loss and be like, huh, who cares? Anyways, uh, about the camping playstyle and destroyers. Uh, the problem I have is that uh, destroyers are way too versatile because of the first experience thing and uh, the other thing is that, um, well, if everybody is camping, things like smokescreen are much more useful. And, uh, well, that just means you're going to see a lot of destroyers. And that's actually not so bad. It's fine because you can play around it. But what it does cause is that people will camp in destroyers, they will sit still and smoke. And uh, then some destroyers just aren't very good and they will be broadside on, like right now. If I had been broadside on and those torpedoes came, I would be dead. And that would give the enemy team... Well, they wouldn't be ahead in this match, but if this was an equal match right now, if they hadn't lost more than we had so far, the enemy team would have been in an advantageous position and then they would try to hold it for as long as possible. <clears throat> so I, I, I find that too many matches were decided by simply who had uh, less DDs who just sat broadside on in smoke and got torpedoed. Th that's just... That's of course a, you know, skill thing, but I find that it happened too much even at uh, rank 2 to 5. By the way, I'm gonna take a torpedo. Not this one, but those torpedoes. I'm gonna take one. 
but because I take it from behind it's okay and, you know, the Mahan torpedoes don't deal all that much damage. But if I took this into the middle of the ship, I might almost be dead. I might in fact uh, expire from the flooding. But uh, luckily I didn't mess up that way, so in this, in this case it's okay. So there's also the question of where are the carriers? The problem is that carriers are in mirror matchmaking. That means you need an enemy carrier to get a carrier match. And the big issue there is that uh, the carrier population isn't high enough. Uh, because, you know, it's not fun to play air support and, uh, you know, air superiority. Because it doesn't give you much experience, it's difficult to be number one. And because you're, you know, you need to be mirrored, it means that you're going to be spending more time in queue than you're actually going to be spending in the game. And that's a big, big turnoff. Like, I saw very, very few uh, carrier players in the higher tiers. In the lower tiers, sure, because there are just more of them. But in the higher tiers, carriers were incredibly rare. And carriers are the main counter to DDs because they can spot them and... Uh, well, no carries means that DDs are much, much better off. So, yeah, I would like Wargaming to do something to get carries into ranked. I don't know how they're gonna do it, but I would really like to play some carries in ranked sometime in the future. And now the last topic is maps. So there are a bunch of maps which, in my opinion, don't suit ranked. One of them is Shatter, for instance, this very same map. Then there's also North. Uh, I find that the maps that don't fit are similar to two brothers in random battles. The main problem is that they have something big in the middle that you can't pass properly in most ships and that you can't shoot over. Like in the case of Shatter you have these big islands that you can't shoot over. And this makes it, um, you know, moving around a lot less likely. And the north is similar. It's a, it's a lot of camping. So I feel that... Um, Game should have more maps like New Dawn that are open. They have enough islands to hide behind, but they also enable you to shoot over things because that one just feels so much better. So um, yeah, that, that's that's just like I feel. I feel like maps like New Dawn and Land of Fire and Faultline are so much better than maps like North and Shatter, and I do wish we had less of them. So anyways, this was uh, the match that I got ranked 1 in. By the way, I got ranked 1, so uh, I would like to mention this guy. He literally said, don't even dream to get rank 1 with your skills playstyle. Well, suck it, Dan. Suck it. I got my rank 1. And I even got it in the Buscavitsa, and I fired the final shot that won us the game. So yeah, th that's essentially what I thought about ranked. Like, I feel that um, adding the stock... Like, not losing the star as first is a really big problem. And uh, it's also a really big problem that we have maps like North and Shatter. They just don't feel nice in ranked. And I would also like to see some carriers in ranked in the future. I don't know how to do it, but, you know, board gaming is rather smart. They'll figure it out. So anyways, I would like to thank my patrons on Patreon today. Let's go with uh, ELR. Thank you very much for your continued support, and I hope I see you guys next time.